Nation, and welcome to the 32nd episode of the Huntington Local League Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Smith. With me is co-host Jeremy Litton and Greg Sowers. How's it going, guys? Woo! Woo-hoo! Glad to be back. It's also, good, to, good co- to be here. Also co-hosting with me is Jeremy Ray and Patrick Rayo. How's it going, guys? Phenomenal. Awesome. Awesome. All right. In curious mode. This time we're going to be returning to our non-league podcast after this one. Uh, but this episode, number mandates us to resurrect a gimmick bit series. So Jeremy Litton is back. Hooray! Woo! Woo! Yay! So we'll be interviewing him as well as talking with Patrick Rowe, whoa, whoa. Greg Sowards, Jeremy Ray, and a surprise guest. Where we'll be answering trivia questions with consequences for wrong answers. We'll be right back to get started after this break. So, Hallow Whiffle just happened. Let's do have a brief recap. Mothman won their second consecutive Hallow Whiffle title, defeating Dinger City in a thriller on field two. And that's the field with the 40-foot tall monster all the way across. And Tyler Roush won a home run derby, hitting a whopping 27 home runs in just two minutes. And Dinger City won the Best Sportsmanship Award. There were only five teams, unfortunately. And the event uh, was on the verge of cancellation. But nevertheless, money was raised for the Hoops Children's Hospital at Cabell Huntington. And that's all that matters, really. Uh, we'll talk a little more in depth about the tournament in our next episode. Um, but while we're on the subject, we had the distinguished honor of finally seeing some familiar faces uh, make a return to the field, namely Mike McCoy, Ronnie Canterbury, and Nick Capra, who's on the line right now. How's it going, Nick? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Awesome. He's back. Yeah. Yay! Yay! Clap hands, everyone! Clap hands! Everybody's really excited to you see you there. You guys are welcome. Pretty good feeling. By the way, because I brought back Mike and Ronnie. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. <laughs> Have you managed to play any wiffle ball now that you're in Maryland, other than yesterday? Um, I still have the board I made to practice pitching, so I still get my throws in, but I haven't found a actual organized league out here yet. Um, I'm in the hunt though. So. I guess that means you miss wiffle ball. So what do you miss the most about it? I mean, every every week it was a new event. Uh, there's so many people and so many teams there. Uh, and you, when we always play two games, uh, we always have the doubleheader seasons. So getting able to meet and communicate with other players, just other people in the area, because I originally came from out of town. So being able to meet other people in the area... And, I mean, it's just a goofy sport. You have guys all around that some of them were really athletic, some of them weren't, but we were all there to have a good time. Hi, Nick. It's Patrick. I haven't seen your beautiful face in, like, forever. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you remember me. You know, we were, like, across the street neighbors. <laughs> yeah. You remember that? Yeah. It was, yeah. like, forever ago. I miss you. I miss you. Oh, but, but Josh like, is yelling at me for not asking a question. Will we ever see Nick Capra make a return as a season player? For the HWL, probably not. But and if you're coming back as a season player, what kind of season are you coming back as? Man, it was a it was a new experience <laughs> with the Howl Wiffle tournament and being able to experience a new format because I left before the switch for um, slow pitch from from fast pitch. So. If I was going to come back, I'd have to figure something out uh, with my form. But if I did make a return, hopefully it'd be matching up with your guys' format. Nick, it's Jeremy. Uh, I'm hey. just glad to see you, buddy. Yeah. Um, when you were a regular player, we were still fast pitch. Now that you've seen slow pitch, what are your thoughts about it? Um, for... It's a, it's a very different type of game. Uh, when I was playing with fast pitch, oh, we had a lot of good pitches at that time, so it was a very low-scoring, pitch-heavy game. There weren't a lot of home runs, and when there were home runs, they're usually the ones that won the games. Uh, I think when I played for 
Wee Willie Wiffle are scores for the vast majority of our games ended in 1-0. Either with us one yes. or us losing. <laughs> so, but, or a bad call uh, going against us. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> that, that definitely happens too. But uh, I think for the longevity of the sport, it's a lot better because then you don't have a power team. Uh, like, after that, some some people decide to leave and then other teams combine. And then you have two or three amazing pitchers that can just shut down everybody. So what it really does level out the playing field, uh, which makes it a lot more interesting. But it, it is super difficult to get used to. Uh, it took me at the Hollow Wiffle tournament a good a good couple innings to find my bearings a little bit. Now I don't think you you understand what slow pitch is. Do you even have a slow speed to your pitching? Well, uh, <laughs> yeah. the Hollow Wiffle tournament kind of I had to take some. Back. Uh, there's a couple ones where I knew way too hard, but uh, I have a good changeup. Uh, I kind of got into that motion of things. Uh, it's kind of hard to gain your focus because the spin of the ball is, is totally different when you're throwing it slow than when you're throwing it fast. Because, like, when I throw a curveball, I'll hold the holes off to the side on the right to have it cut in. But when I throw it slow, it'll shoot way past the person if it's the, it would go behind their back if they're left handed and I wasn't able to do that because now the wind affects it so much more with slow pitch and with fast pitch I, I will say uh, you, you'd still be probably a top two pitcher in this league I mean Jeremy no offense your arm is you know falling off of you as we speak um, <laughs> and I think the, the thing it's about Nick better. that a lot of people just never got to see was Nick was smart about everything that he did on the mound. He was never afraid to walk the best hitter because he knew that it made him survive another day. Uh, and I, I think that that was always a huge play that, you know, even though, Nick, you, you could be cocky as the best of them, but at the end of the day, you were always looking for the way to win. And I think that that always made you highly competitive, but at the same time, very smart in what you were doing on the field. Yeah. Thanks, Pat. I'm glad you brought me into the sport. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, it's good to have you back, Nick, even if it is just on a podcast or a, a screen here. We're going to take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to be revisiting some memories again by talking about the best one-and-done teams when we come back. Unfortunately, is unable to be with us, but he had a very good idea, and this episode is a perfect episode to discuss it. Uh, it is what he calls the best one-and-done teams, uh, so that's what this segment is about. Uh, he brought this up a few months ago, and we'll finally be exploring it on the air for some good off-season discussion. We have had over 30 teams come and go in our league's six-year history. Some have lasted a few years, but mostly, uh, most of them have only lasted one season before changing their team name or their rosters or disappearing entirely. Simply put, I want to discuss the best one-and-done teams to ever play in our league. As a rule, we won't be discussing any team that played this year, and we're limiting it to just five teams. So I want each of us just to pick one team. And if you could, if it's some, if it's a team that someone's already mentioned, mention a different team, because we do have plenty to, to choose from. So um, we'll also not... Uh, like I said, we're not going to talk about any teams that were that had played this year as a rule. Or last year. Or last year. Uh, Wiffle it led wonders. That's, that's, that's immediately breaking the rules. Jeremy, <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? All right, so things to keep in mind when you're pitching this team. Uh, what were they remembered for? What were they best at? And what was the league competition at the time that they played? And why uh, do you think uh, they're no longer around? 
and how uh, do you think they would perform if they would have played this year, and why do they deserve to be on the list? So, um, Patrick, we'll start with you. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to pick Wee Willie Wiffle. Uh, <laughs> Go figure. Nice. The obvious choice. So Wee Willie Wiffle is made up of uh, me, myself, uh, Nick Capra, Jacob Dunkel, Andy for the preseason, Love uh, Jason Grady, uh, who I believe is still is still the first African-American to play in the league. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Richard Ball who would always complain about playing Wiffle every single day of showing up at the field. Every single day, why do we play this sport? Uh, what they are best remembered for is Nick pretty Cameron, much ending Nick. Josh Berlich's reign in the league. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Nick Cameron, Peggy. All, in, all in one game uh, between Nick pegging his girlfriend on the way to first base and almost coming to blows to him sliding over the <laughs> Wiffle ball um, and then ye- continually yelling at Josh about baseball th- that was, for about 35 minutes. Yeah, that was an awesome and kicking gift, a bucket. By the way. And then and then kicking a bucket uh, the previous week, which basically set him on probation. Uh, <laughs> at the time. Um, I think that that was probably the best year uh, the league had ever been around. Uh, it was the most competitive, the evenly split. Uh, every week was really a toss-up just um, on who was going to win. Even the worst team was surprising uh, in different areas every single week, so I think that was always a fun time during that. Um, they deserve to be on the list just because, number one, they would have been in the championship that year if no. somebody else didn't complain enough about a false rule that uh, did not exist and would never exist and, you know, if we would have just <laughs> accepted the result, they would have never been in the championship because that was it. Next <laughs> arm was completely done, and the pitch one more inning uh, after a runner's interference call was uh, just bullcrap. <laughs> so I present Wee Willie Wiffle. All right. Uh, Nick, uh, you, you played two seasons, and you've seen your fair share of one and done teams. Who, who, you can't pick Willie, Wee Willie Wiffle now. You pick a different team. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, who you got? Um. I think I heard, I didn't play with them, but I saw and heard enough about the Maroon Squad where I can give it up to them. Uh, they, I know they had really, really good bats, but this... I don't mean to cut you off, Nick, but uh, James Clagg wants to join this podcast. He said just let him know when we're doing it. Nice! <laughs> <laughs> Western Regional. Yeah. Uh, until it's time I for did. the podcast, then he's nowhere to be found. <laughs> Sorry, Nick, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, you're good, you're good. Uh, I remember they had really, really good bats, but this is at a time where we didn't exclusively use the yellow bats, right? Right. We still have the black bats. Yeah, the little, bats. little sluggers. Yeah. So, uh, they were known for their bats, so, that, I mean, that's what they were best at. Uh, and that was also the type of competition they were at. Uh, it was also in the beginning phases. Uh, I don't know how many other like super competitive teams there were. One. Uh, <laughs> I think I can answer why they're no longer around yeah. because yeah, <laughs> end up the other performance yeah. after they won the whole thing yeah. and just got mutilated at the NWL. Uh, hey. I don't know how they would have performed in 2017, but if they were around the next year, I would. Fair, I would say with fair certainty that they wouldn't have been in the top three. I think Wee Willie Wiffle, uh, Jeremy's team at the time, which was it wasn't sit on my base though. Yeah, it, was, it was it was sit on my base. Yeah, it, it was sit on my base. Okay, yeah. so there was them, and then there was Drew's team breaking balls, breaking balls, right? Breaking balls, None right? Of which and then won the championship that year. <laughs> so I don't think they would have been around the top uh, contenders, especially switching over to the yellow bat, the pitching, That's fair and just overall competition. But I think they do deserve to be on the list because that was like the inaugural first swing and they did very well during their time. Uh-huh. Jeremy, what do you got? All right. I got the Whifflers of 2014 because that team consisted of 
um, Ronnie Canterbury, Stephanie Sadler, Stephen Atkins, Justin Fairman. I mean, just all real, like, in itself, that is a solid team. Um, what were they remembered for? They could always give you, they could always surprise you and give you a loss. Mm-hmm. Like, they could, uh, they, their bats could wake up in one game and then they would get shut out in the other game, but they could always give you a loss just out of nowhere. Um, they were, I think that they could have uh, played in the competition level at this league. I know Justin played on a different team. Uh, Ronnie played in the tournament this past uh, this past weekend. So I do think that uh, they could have competed uh, in competition. Um, the league competition that they played in, they kind of got hosed out with the uh, – uh, 2014 was just a magical s- season of they all had great pitchers, which Stephen Atkins was one of the top pitchers in the league uh, that year because he could um, he could ha- have a no hitter going and still lose four to nothing <laughs> with the no hitter because he walked everybody, yeah. but no one could hit him, but he would walk everybody. But yeah. he was I mean he was one of the fastest pitchers out there. Um, <laughs> why they're no longer around uh, the year after each one of those players except for Justin and Ronnie uh, Steven went to a different team uh, Justin and Ronnie went to the chicken and waffles and then uh, Stephanie just stopped playing which Stephanie was one of the better female players oh, yeah. that has ever oh, yeah. come through uh, Possibly the best yeah I, I still between her and um, Brock, what is it Sam- yeah. Samaya Chaudhary it's, uh, all, not just good for being females, just good ball players in general. Yeah, uh, Stephanie go toe to toe with anybody. And do I think they would have performed well in 2017? Yes, I do. Uh, I think they could have adapted well to the slow pitch, and plus they had had a a star pitcher for the uh, fast pitch edition. So I think they could have fared uh, a lot better than some of the teams that were already in it this year. And that's why that's why I think they deserve to be on this list. I think that was the most. They they came in at the wrong time. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, Greg, who do you got? My pick got to be with Lynn Dixie. <laughs> oh God! Oh my God! As a decent team, as a decent team. Hey, hey you know what? <laughs> we were picked to be last that year in the entire league. I think we finished like fifth out of eight teams. So we're not last. We're fifth. Uh, it's pretty close to four. Only place. because of yeah. plain white teeth. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but we we were like one game behind. I think the Asthmatics that year. <laughs> you were one game behind the Wolves. <laughs> uh, Brad's team because they forfeited all the time. That is a true statement. We, we had two teams that were pretty bad. That's true. You got anything else you want to expand on that, Greg? Or you just uh, ah, fuck you know, good it was it was Mike McCoy's last year. Playing in the league, he was on that year. Yeah. Oh man! I mean, you you got to give it to me. I had a fifteen or sixteen year old kid that, as soon as he got upset, he was done for the day. Basically, fielding, hitting, throwing play, his hat, playing ball at all. I had a, my team's been fifteen to sixteen this whole time. The league's been around. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody ever knows his real age. He, he, he actually, actually it's like, like the Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> he, he actually. Uh, Turned 18 this last year, became legal to play in the league, and then stopped. <laughs> <laughs> the irony. Uh, oh, God. But, I can't uh, say I'm blaming him. Then I had a 60 year old man on my team. I mean, he was all right, but. You know. Still played better than Mike. Yeah. It, it, my brother actually played on your team for one week. Yeah. Uh, that's the only time my brother. He, he was a staple in our old league, and the only time he ever played in this league was. Uh, like week four of the 2015 season yeah. on your team. Did pretty well, too. Yeah, he, he would have been a great addition to have the entire year. Had he been there the entire year, we could have finished top four. Yeah, he had Zach Daniels, too, but he was real streaky. He used to be a really good hitter. I don't know what happened. <laughs> that, I thought Zach was part of the Plain White Tees that year. Well, he was. Yeah. Actually, yeah, that was the year I let the Plain White Tees hit. Oh, yeah, him, and he, he hit, like, 20 home runs in five games for them. Yeah, and when the Plain White Tees... Uh, uh, didn't have enough even when with Zach there. Zach would play for Whiffle and Dixie, if I remember correctly. No, he didn't play for my team at all. At all? Okay. Yeah. Well, it must be the next year he played with you then. Yeah, for like a week. And slow and pitch. Was like, eh, okay. Never mind. All right. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Whiffle and Dixie so, just. Is that Huntington? It would not work now. 
uh, <laughs> to have with my dick sitting on the team in the in the current climate. No, uh, we've had not. some pretty risky, uh, risky ass <laughs> team names, and uh, I think we talked about in a former episode. It's like we've had Welfare Warriors, Make Wiffle Ball Great Again, and Whiff on Dixie all in the past three years. So I, yeah. it's probably a good thing that uh, we've kind of piped down with the uh, controversial team names. Jeremy Lydon. Um, you know, I've got several. Like I already know what you're going to say. Just fucking say it. Oh, the owls. Oh, uh, no, no, not that. Not that. <laughs> I even, uh, hold on, that's the best all-girls team we've ever had. It's the only all-girls team we've ever had. <laughs> no, but, uh, of course, I'm going to say um, the Welfare Warriors. Why? They're an awful, awful team. That's what they're remembered for. So awful, they couldn't even win the Dangerfield tournament. Uh, you know, they're, they were up for it, and they <laughs> lost in that. Uh, what are they best at? Arguing with each other. Playing on their cell phones in the middle of a game. I was going to say losing, but... And losing. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, Josh, we still beat your team. By, like, one run. Well, yeah. 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 You, still, Josh, still you're still the reason they didn't win the Dangerfield uh, tournament. Because you lost to them. I like to play spoiler. But, you know, I, I look back on that year, I'm like, if the competition was a little less competitive that year, because we were looking at it... A little. Well, hold on, hold on. <laughs> we were looking at that year, like, the year before... And we're like, hey, we got a good shot, you know, because we can play more casual. And then all of a sudden, you had Maroon Squad, you had Pink Penguins. You had this talent that was never in the league before. So I think things would have been different if not for that talent, if it were more laid back. I guess. That would have been a better team. Yeah, because you would have got to play Josh a lot more and beat him. Welfare well, Warriors may, may have fared well in a uh, slow pitch format. Yeah. I think any team would fare well, well in a know, slow pitch format. It takes... Since then, they've actually asked if they want to form a team, and I'm just like, oh, hell no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not doing it. Who jeers their own teammates like to the point of just not <laughs> wanting to come back? I mean, like... They, they actually quit in the middle of a doubleheader with my team. <laughs> they did. And forfeited, and then yeah. like the next week we had extra time, and they had enough people, different people... That they brought in. Listen, I'd play. replace all them. Uh, there was actually like ten members of that team that year. Yeah. But anyway, well, you all gave. You know what they were most remembered about? <laughs> Even though they lost, they never accepted a handout. That's, that's <laughs> very true. Very true. No one ever forfeited. You guys. <laughs> they pulled themselves up by their bootstraps. That's right. We tried to get Marine Squad to forfeit. They wouldn't do it for whatever reason. Yeah. Fake teams. Fake teams. You, you know. You know the <laughs> the first team to beat Marine Squad that year. The yellow beaver beaver. No. It'll get you. I thought you were going to... S- well, no. Anyway, those are some interesting interesting takes. I'm not going to offer one because there's, there's just so many teams to go through there. I think all those are, are ones that I would I definitely... The, the of, of merit. Uh, I, the only team I would really mention that was not mentioned here was the Pink Penguins. I think Pink Penguins would have done well in every uh, format change we've had throughout the years. Uh, for various reasons, they had good pitchers, good hitters, good team chemistry, everything. So, so anyway, we could do this all day, but that was a pretty fun segment. And uh, by the time we get through the uh, 64 minute episode, fun. when we're old, old men, when we get to the 64 episodes, we'll probably, unfortunately, have some other teams that we could add to this list. Uh, when we come back, we're going to be also reminiscing just a little bit more, but with some high stakes for consequences. That's right, it's calling your shot. The uh, first time we're going to be previewing this segment. Maybe we'll have it reoccurring on episodes in the future so we have a reason to drink. When we come back, calling your shot. back so since we've uh had so many dedicated hwl whifflers all in the same room metaphorically uh i think that we could do something i've been wanting to do for a while trivia uh this but this won't be just some boring quiz no there will be consequences for wrong answers namely shots thus the name of the segment well, calling fine. your shot let's get started just so listeners know i will be taking a shot every round since i wrote the questions 
Each player must answer each question and will only have 10 seconds each to answer per round. And we will only be doing five rounds so no one dies. How we'll do it is I will ask the question. Each one of you take a turn answering. I won't say if it's right or wrong until we're at the end. I will be keeping track of who got it wrong and we'll be taking shots. You guys understand the rules? Yep. When in doubt, yep. just drink fucking alcohol, okay? All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, question one. There were two seasons where we kept separate postseason statistics. Which two seasons were they? We'll just start with Jeremy, Litton, Greg, Jeremy, Patrick, Nick. We'll just stay in that order, okay? So, there were two seasons where we kept separate postseason statistics on the website. Which two seasons were they? Litton. Uh, hold on, I'm looking it up. No, get oh. your... <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Uh, uh, you're, you're definitely taking a shot now. 20, 2014-2015. Greg. 2012-2013. Patrick. 2014-2015. Jeremy. I'm going 2014. I know that for a fact. Uh, 2015. Nick, I'm I'm saying the same thing. 2014, 2015. You were all wrong. It was 2013, 2014, 2015 was included. Ah, <laughs> in I the was going to say what, what year? Just do what? 2013, 2014. You Bottoms all said up, bitches. You all said 2014. I wasn't. There. Hey, hey, uh, I can't. I shouldn't be able to hear your voice. You should be swallowing whiskey right now, Jeremy. <sighs> Mm. All right, pour that more. Give me more. <laughs> oh, All right. Fuck. Oh. I'm jacked. I think I was right. All right. Better get sweaty. Greg Sowers, Jeremy Litt, and I are drinking Tullamore's Irish whiskey. What are you drinking, uh, Patrick? Uh, for copyright informant, I can't say. Well, what what just... kind of spirit is it? So you you can. What? <laughs> Cinnamon whiskey. Okay. Uh, Litton, what are you drinking? Not Litton, it's... All right, Ray. Ray, Come Ray on, what are you drinking? Josh. I'm already drinking. Captain. 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 Nick, Captain. what do you got? Vodka. Oh, nice. Okay, let's go ahead and get another shot lined up. Yeah, Greg. Are we out? No, it never runs out. It's like Hanukkah over here. Come on. All right. So. <laughs> hey, 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 that's short. That's short. Well, why are you pouring it so little? It, we're actually going to run out, probably. Yeah. That's why go. I brought That's the rye better. whiskey. Right. <laughs> Question going. Let's All right. Ready. Shot Question two. Seven players have thrown perfect games throughout our league history. Name five of them. If you can name the other two, you can choose someone to take an additional shot. All right. So, Jeremy Litton, name at least five people who have thrown a perfect game ever in HWL. Jeremy Ray, Drew McClanahan, uh, Nick Capra, um, oh damn, this is hard. Uh, Andrew, no, Mike McCoy, I don't know, Andrew Westcott. I'm taking a shot. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm taking a shot. Okay, Greg. <laughs> Drew McClanahan, Stephen Atkins, Rick Patterson. Oh, I forgot about him. Oh. <laughs> oh. Ten seconds, Greg. Ten seconds. Mm. Three, two, shots for you. Patrick. Okay, so I'm going to go Drew McClanahan. Drew McClanahan. <laughs> Drew McClanahan. Uh, I know you guys always brag about Greg Sowards in the perfect game, so I'm going with Greg Sowards. And I remember watching uh, Nick Capra pitch a perfect game, so that's my five. Shot for you, sir. Nick. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> so, Drew, Jeremy, Ray, uh, I think Steve Atkins had one, Greg had one, I had one, I'm pretty sure Jake Fisher had one, and I think uh, the guy from the Honey Badgers did. Okay. Uh, I can't remember his name, though. Brillabitch? Brillabitch? Uh, the glasses? Curly hair? No. Uh, oh, Paul. Paul. That's Paul. 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 I think he had one, too. Okay. All right, Jeremy. Okay. Drew McClanahan, me, uh, Capra, Jacob Fisher, Rick Patterson, um... 
I'm going with Greg, Jacob Fisher, and Stephen Atkins. Okay. Two people got at least five right. I'm and, one of them. No. You can't yes. mention the same person three times. I said players, not occurrences. How many times did, how many times did Drew McClain throw a perfect game, though? A million <laughs> times. Nick Capra, okay, Nick Capra <laughs> and Jeremy Ray got five right. Jacob Fisher never threw a perfect game. He did throw a no-hitter. So, everybody else, take a shot. Yeah. I'm under a formal protest. Nope. Oh. Hey, uh, I'm for a protest. Hey, 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 Patrick, glass to lips, son. Here we go. One, two, three. Uh, Drew McClanahan counts as four people on this subject. Oh. So, so who were the, who were the seven? But not I'm glad you asked, up. Greg. The seven people who have thrown perfect games in HWL history were Josh Hager. Uh, who the fuck's Josh Hager? He's a Maroon Squad guy. Oh, Greg Sowards, Drew Who's McClanahan times fifty. He threw like seven. Stephen Adams. Yeah, I know. That's Jeremy. why my answer counts. And that's why you're wrong. It doesn't matter. Stephen Atkins, Jeremy Ray, Rick Patterson, Bullshit. who did that during the slow pitch format. You're welcome. And Nick Capra. The next question. Let's get the rye whiskey out. Mm-mm. Oh, fuck. This is bull. I'm filing formal protests. I'm so filing I'm sexual harassment. Let's talk about that. I think somebody should have had more uh, dual amount. <laughs> I'll put it on my list. Oh, oh, oh. You just have to drink it. Through a lot, though. All right. Filled it to the fucking top. Okay. Better get some Question right. three. Who is the most awarded player in league history? League awards only. And we're not counting national or anything else like that. As far as when we did the awards for the league, which I stopped doing because everyone was whiny bitches about it, which we're not going to talk about. Who is the most <laughs> awarded player in league history for league awards? Yes. We'll start with Jeremy. Um, I have one question before I... There, it's just a, not a question. Uh, question. No, no, no. I, does this also include previous <laughs> leagues? No, this only includes HWL. Okay, I'm going with Greg Sowers. Okay, Greg, we got Greg Sowers. All right, Patrick. Well... Uh, Two man ranks. Hmm. I'm it's gonna go on. with Josh now. Huntington Wiffle Ball history. I'm gonna go with uh, Jeremy Ray. Okay, Nick. Uh, I think I'm doing Jeremy Ray from 2014. Okay, that's just correct uh, right now. So Jeremy, I mean I've won four that I know of. Uh, I'm going with myself as well. I'm pretty sure Greg got like sportsmanship. Greg and Jeremy Ray are correct. Jeremy Ray did win four, but Greg Sowers has won five HWO awards. So Woo-hoo! that would be a shot for Nick, a shot for Patrick, and a shot for Jeremy. Uh, I can I still do all of the five I, awards I did. that Greg Sowers won because this is bullcrap. He was only, on the committee. He got a vote you know, for Patrick, his I'm glad you asked that. If only we had a website where all that shit was. If only. <laughs> it's not updated. I looked at that once. I just we 20, haven't, we 2016, haven't. I had the highest batting average. Doesn't we that count? No, we didn't do awards that year. We stopped doing awards oh in 2015 because yeah, everyone's how many fucking bitches about it. Boy. Right, bitch. Hey, hey. All right. Next <laughs> question. Fine, oh, Jesus. Oh, wait. I got to do a shot. Sorry. <laughs> My glass is still full. <laughs> yeah. So All right. Fine. Pause, 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 pause. All right, so the the here's the in order of people who had the most awards. Greg Sowers had five. Jeremy Ray had four. Drew McClanahan, James Clagg were tied for having three. Jacob Fisher and Josh Burltich had the next most with two. Everybody else has won one or less. All right, so we're going to move on to... To answer Jeremy Witten's question, I'm chasing Fireball with Angry Orchard. It's not super. So <laughs> how's that? How's that combo working? Cinnamon out for you? and apple. <laughs> Cinnamon apple. It really, it's really bad. It's called Angry Balls. Cinnamon apple. <laughs> is it? Is it? Is it? Is it kind of like Apple Jacks? Uh, it's really rough. Okay. <laughs> it, gets, it gets you pretty bad. Pretty bad. All right. Question four. This is going to be the best question. I'm, I feel. How many times did Josh Burl? How many uh, Josh Burltich bucket kicks do we have on film? <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> not fair. What is the cause of some of those? Uh, <laughs> how, how many we have on film? I'm talking about like the battery didn't die. Uh, they're actually on the internet. How okay. many yeah. do we have on film? So 
Um, just bucket, or does this include bag? Hey, it'd be great if you listened to the question. It was bucket kicks. <laughs> I bucket mean, kicks. <laughs> what we're doing here. It was, it'd be great if you weren't a douchebag. Uh, again, Jeremy, just answer the question. Jeremy Litton. All right, sorry. so ten seconds. So don't. don't I know. Don't theorize here. Just how many there were? I'm just trying to remember how many on video. Give I'm going to go with at least. No, 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 at least. I want an approximate number. Yeah, number. Three, two, you, you said one. it. Three. Three. Okay. One. Okay. Patrick. Oh. Um, so, sure my heart. Three. He just my heart three. says that there's more bucket to kicks before we got to oh, the yeah. Um So, my answer is going to be four. Okay. It's a high number. And Nick? Uh, I'm... I very distinctly remember three, and I was the cause of one of them. <laughs> okay, so are you going with three or what? Yeah, I'm okay. going to take, take three, because I know you did the honey batters too. Okay, there's Jeremy Ray. There's one that was very famous against breaking balls. Um, obviously, there was something happening with uh, Wee Willie Wolf on... Honey Badgers. I'm going with two. Okay. Because sometimes some of the films would not upload and everything else. So, I'm going with two. Okay. Jeremy Ray is actually right. It is two. We have two bucket kicks. Oh, yes! yes. <laughs> everybody else Which take a shot. Are take a oh, shot, God. everybody. Take a shot. Yes! The, the most, <laughs> memorable, most memorable one is uh, the one where, uh, in my opinion, Drew, oh, God. Drew mentioned it. Breaking balls. The one where he kicked it yes, over the fence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm officially out see, of fireball. Hey, oh, <laughs> no. See, I distinctly remember three, but I remember the third one. May on I, film. On hold film. on. May or may not count because I think it was like the camera either was pointed in a different direction and you saw the balls like fly. So that's, yeah. That, that's, why, that's why I said that there's a good possibility it's only two yeah. because sometimes the cameras would not pull, pick up some of the things. Right. Yeah. Well, they, they'd run out of battery life. It's something I tend on working on for next year. But uh, anyway. Hey, Josh. Refill. Refill. Oh, okay. Or, uh, unless that was the last question. No, there's one more. Oh, oh right. <laughs> I actually want more because oh, I'm enjoying this. This is a lot of fun. This ride. Yeah, but it is. I'm uh, out of. I'm out of shots. So. This, <laughs> I'm, I'm this, uh, this is what I have you remember. Get the question right then. Just a plug-in for uh, uh was it Tullamore Dew? Very good. Very good. Knob Creek. Not so much. Oh, dude, it's strong. It's good shit. All right, so. Whew. Question uh, five. It's going to wrap up this section. Uh, we're not going to do call your shot every episode because we don't have enough trivia or enough alcohol. Uh, so bullshit. We don't. Question. We I, I have enough we alcohol. Not everybody else has enough alcohol. All right. So question five. We have had ten female players in the league. That's crazy. I thought it was less than that, but when I count up, it's ten. Name seven of them. <laughs> if you can name all ten, you can choose someone to take an extra shot. All right, so Jeremy, let's get started. Name at least seven. Hey, Josh. Guess hey, uh, the clock is ticking. So. Watch this. Watch this. All right, he's forfeiting his turn. Just taking a shot, Greg. All right. <laughs> My wife, your wife. Oh, Josh Cooley's girlfriend. Okay. Stephanie, Julie. Oh, the parole officer down in Huntington. You gotta say her name. I don't know. Well, you gotta say her name. You gotta say her name. You gotta say her name. That's the only way to count. Three, <laughs> two, uh, one. Oh my god. All right. You're and Jeremy's uh, Girl, whatever she was that showed up to the that <laughs> tournament earlier. She never played. And the clock has expired. <laughs> That's seven. <I> got it. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Patrick. Seven. Patrick. So I'm gonna go with uh, Josh's wife. Greg's wife. You no, know you guys have uh, names. Ariel. Uh, okay. Christy. Oh, I forgot about uh, Ariel. Ariel. Um, Stephanie Sadler. Pickle is the parole officer. Oh, no, that's not her name. Hey. I'm um, sorry. What's, what's her name? What is her name? Hey, let's. Hey, if, someone, if it's someone's turn, let's let them have their turn, guys. Come on. All right, Patrick, keep going. Uh, Kara Dill is her name. All right. Yes. But she goes by Pickle. Okay. Um, say so. Uh, the Sumada Kuma <laughs> and, and Veronica. Are you trying to shoot a blast right now? What are you doing? 
That, whatever that was, it doesn't count. I just want you to know. That does count. No, it doesn't. You it can't say Shiva Kumini and then just think that that's good enough. That's to me, come on. No, 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 no. Let's move to the answer are a fucking racist. <laughs> oh, All right, Nick. Nick, Nick, you're up. Dude, there's no way. <laughs> just take your shot, son. Jeremy Ray, you're up. <laughs> Jackie. Um, <laughs> Stephanie, um, Kara, uh, Samaya, uh, oh, Veronica, Veronica, your wife, Josh, and your wife, Greg, and fuck you all! <laughs> <laughs> all right. Jeremy got close. He got six. Another Wait, game. that was Wait, seven. Wait. Seven? No, I got all seven. No, you said Shiva Kamini, who was not a player. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it. I didn't see your name on the score sheet. I, I, but I knew exactly, exactly what I'm talking about. Up. You knew Everybody. exactly what I'm talking Everybody. about. Yeah, of course I know who you're talking about, but that, it's not the same as getting hey, things right. Hey, I, don't I, I, I named like, seven. Like, seven. Shot, shot, shot. Shots. I named shot. oh, seven. Shot. Shots. Shots. I'm taking the shot, but shot. I got seven. I counted. No, you didn't. I counted seven, too. I got seven. Jeremy's... Girlfriend didn't play. Yes, his girlfriend played in that tournament. That no, she did she not. Kept score anyway. No, no, the one. I, 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 I refuse to take my shot. And there's also, uh, also, I never got you know the final ten second runoff on mine. Hey, um, no, Cassie played. Vickers played. Uh, for my team this past year, so that up, gives me eight. Drink, so Greg. eat shit, you motherfuckers. Here's the ten: <laughs> Stephanie Sadler, Beth Smith, Christy Sowards, Ali Scott, Tierra Boggs. Kara Dills, Julie Meadows, <laughs> Veronica Stanley, Samaya Shonry, Ariel Horde. I don't know who this Vickers person is. Eric, I don't oh, that's right. Uh, how how, did, you, how did you not get Samaya? Come on now. You said Shiva. <laughs> Samaya <laughs> Shiva is an Indian name, and Samaya is from the Middle East, I think. Oh my I mean, God. You could say Sha, and then yeah. a bunch of vowels. Um, after. We all blacked out during your answer. Anyway, that was calling your shot. We're gonna hey, take a quick it, Josh. There were eleven. Hey, who won that? Huh? Hey, who won that calling that calling your shot? I, I got three out of five. I think we all. I won. got one right. <laughs> <laughs> I got two right. I got one right. Doesn't I got matter three. Matter if you win or lose, as long as we had fun. Drinking. I think if we kept score, Jeremy Ray probably got the most. Oh, of course he did. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, hey, uh. does that mean? You <laughs> No. Yeah. You still don't get a trophy, Jeremy. <laughs> uh, Business as usual. Listen, 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 listen. According to the kid division, yes, I do. Hey, I, I won the best costume. Don't forget it, bitch. All right. Oh, so, uh, um, actually, don't go had your beat. No. We did don't a vote. Had you beat. We did a vote. And everybody don't go had your beat. Me. Don't go had you beat. Like, that's, like, they just voted on me and you. Yeah, I will say. They didn't vote on Dunkle. I will say I, I did enjoy Duckle's costume. I don't. He, that's the first time he's actually dressed up. I really wish people would get more into the Halloween element of that, but we'll discuss that in the next episode. All right, that was calling your shot. I am sweating my balls off right now. We're going to take a quick break and come right back. And we're back. Special thanks to all the guests in this episode. Let's do it again. <laughs> thanks, Andrew. Let's do it again for episode sixty-four. And I have a and have a Mario Kart party. I got my N sixty-four still. So let's make plans on for episode sixty-four sometime like I don't know the year twenty twenty-one or something. I think we can make it twenty twenty nineteen. No one can. No one can be Yoshi. Yeah. Next will be episode thirty-three, and it will be our spooky episode. That will feature ghastly guest Bradley Burke. Bradley will be talking about what what it was like uh, to get prepared for the Howl Wiffle tournament and why you were crazy for missing it. I originally had it planned as a hype episode, but time got away from me. 
Uh, then we'll resume our off-season non-league series for episode 34 and talk to Sam Beeson and Mark Maynard, the runners of the Amy for Africa tournament in Ashland, Kentucky. It's a great cause and well-run little event and has grown a lot in a short run. Uh, should be a very interesting interview. Episode 35, we'll be talking to the commissioner of the Greater Cincinnati Wiffleball League, our closest Wiffle neighbors. Uh, his name is Jim Bryant. And for the complete list of the guests we're going to have through episode 40, go to our website, HuntingtonWiffleball.com. As always, we're working to make this podcast more entertaining and accessible. Uh, you can listen to all of our episodes on our website, at HuntingtonWiffleball.com, and then clicking on Media, then Podcasts. You can also listen to our episodes on Podomatic at www.HuntingtonWiffle.Podomatic.com and download the episodes and listen to each episode using the podcast app for iOS. Listen to us in your car, during a warm bath, while you're taking a shit or making sweet love, there's never a wrong time to listen to the HWL podcast. I don't know. Does anyone have any last words before I do that? We better get off this. Z Y X W T U B. We better get off this before Patrick shows I love you, Josh. Patrick, you need to get some help. <laughs> you need therapy. Yeah. You need to call dial zero, and then they'll pump your stomach. <laughs> Nick, it's been awesome having you on the show, man. Hey, man, keep following the league online so I can have you back on the episode so you'll know what we're talking about. Yeah, man, I'm more than happy to do it. All okay, right, cool. I'll, I've loved watching your forehead during this whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, you enjoy Andrew there in the dark. Fuck off. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's make plans for 2021 for episode 64 for the Mario Kart party and a podcast, too. Signing no, off for Greg Sowers, Jeremy Litton, Nick Capra, Patrick Rail, and Jeremy Ray. I'm Bottom Josh up, Smith. Bitches. We'll talk to you soon, Wiffle Nation. I can't put my nose. Bye. Peace out. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye Andrew. Bye. Bye.